Okay, so in this video we're checking out the ISDT P30 Smart Charger. This is a charger for those of you guys that tend to fly the really big batteries, like say if you do like 7 inch long range and you're flying like the big 6S 3000 to 5000 milliamp hour packs. Uh, those tend to take a long time to charge on some of the lower powered chargers. This one here has uh, tons of power, so it has two channels here, 1000 watts each, or you can use a parallel adapter to combine the two channels. And if you charge, uh, do a parallel tasking charge, it'll, the entire charger here can charge one battery at 1500 watts. So that's all great and all. Very, uh, it's very nice, you know, typical ISDT design. Uh, the casing is very nice metal instead of plastic. It's quite hefty. Uh, this one, I believe, does up to 8S. Yeah, this one is 8S on both sides. So there's going to be connection for each channel and balance lead connectors on each side for an 8S battery. And so if you want to do 1,000 watts on each channel, you can do that or combine them to do one battery at 1,500 watts. So they are using, let's see here, a XT90 connector in the back here. So they have, um, I think, designed this specifically for their ISDT branded power supply, which is, I think it's called the SP3060. I'll link that down in the description as well. They sell this in a bundle with that power supply, or you can get it separately. And they were going to send me that power supply, but it's been out of stock and probably is still out of stock. I don't know why they don't have it. Um, but if you want to take, if you want to maximize the full potential of this charger, that's the power supply you should use with this one. Now they did send me an alternative. So I've had this for a few months now, but I just haven't been able to use it because for one, I don't have any XT90 like power supplies. So I, had, I have to use a connector to convert to XT60, but you need this anyway for the alternative power supply, which is also, which I'll list down in the description here. It's actually like a server power supply made for HP. And it's got a little wall adapter there. And then you have three um, XT60 outputs here and the output here is going to depend on the input voltage. So um, if you're putting in uh, 110, 120 volts, like here in the US at nine and a half amps, you get an output of 800 watts. But uh, if you increase the input from 110 volts to, what is it here? It's a little bit confusing. So we have input here of 100 volts, output of 800 watts, input of 110 to 120 volts, and then you get an output of 900 watts. And then if you have an input of 200 or 240 volts, which is going to be like, I think a lot of Asian countries, uh, output then comes up to 1200 watts max. So, you know, if you're trying to take a full advantage of this power, the P30 power, um, power uh, charger, if you're doing a thousand watts per channel, this even at maximum output at 1200 watts, this is not going to be enough. You probably want to get two of these. And unless you, even if you want to do like the um, parallel charging at 1500 watts for two channels combined, this is still not enough, but this will this will probably get you going. Um, now I've, I've had some issues with this one that they sent. I'm not exactly sure if it's my problem or something wrong with this. I'm not really going to diagnose it, but what I would recommend is this is actually a lot cheaper too. It's like forty five dollars versus the other one's like three hundred dollars. But if you're serious about using this kind of charger properly. I would recommend getting the expensive charger and not have to deal with the inadequacies of this sort of um, DIY solution. I feel like DIY solution is great, but for me, I would not. I would stay away from this because it's just. I think it's going to be more of a headache in the, in the long run, and just wait for the charger that they intended to be used with this one. But in any case, you don't need this to just. For in terms of demonstration purposes, you don't need it to just get the charger working. I'll show you how it works. Um, here's what else comes in the box. Not a whole lot. You get a sticker, screen protector if you want to replace the one that came with it with a nicer one. And then you get the manual. You do need to buy these XT90 adapters if you're going to be powering with something that's an XT60. So that's what I will be using. Put this in. And in the back here, you do have a USB-C connection and a, and a regular USB-A connection here in the back. I believe um, this one here is probably one for firmware updates. So if you've um, seen any of my prior videos on any of the ISDT chargers, this is pretty similar. Um, obviously, we have two channels here. 
this is a touch screen or touch sensitive buttons here. So you can either select the center button here or go up and down with these buttons here. I'll go to different screens. So this is channel two, this is channel one over here. You can also slide kind of like a virtual scroll reel. And I think that's a feature you can turn off and on. Basically, if you want to cycle through you know, channel one, and if you press the button, if you're on channel one, if you press the button again, you get the channel one task settings. And of course, if you want to go through here, you can use the virtual scroll wheel and scroll up and down, or you can just press the button to go one at a time. And then exit out of here. We'll come back to that here in a second. If you want to see the um, system menu, you press long press the two center buttons at the same time. And this brings up this uh, called the advanced menu. So this is where you can get the dual task or parallel task to how you, you want to combine the two channels so you can go in here. And obviously you don't have anything plugged in, so the menu won't come up, but you can change all your settings here. And the main system settings are going to be right here in this menu. And just go through here, okay. Max input power, 1700 watts. Um, you can adjust that here. Interesting that the max input is 1700 watts, but the max output power is 2000 watts or 1000 watts per channel. And this uh, virtual scroll wheel is a little touchy. Let's just take a look at the system info here are the latest firmware version zero it's on here currently and any button to exit back onto the charge screen here so obviously it's one to 8s so i'm just going to do a quick demo here of a 3s battery okay so the balance lead is going to be plugged in like this with the negative on the left and uh, the uh, battery lead all or the balance lead all the way to the left and you can see the battery voltage is showing up per cell there. We'll just go ahead and click in here for channel one. You can see the cells are there. You can get system info. I think the, once this starts charging, you can get the internal resistance number. So we'll go ahead and long press here. And then we can change our task settings. This is a pretty small battery. Uh, none of this, none of the buttons on this side work. It's only on this side here. So we want to change this current here. Okay, so we have some presets here, five amps through 25 amps in five amp increments. So those are nice to have if you want to use those, but this is a tiny battery, not a really big one. So we're gonna pick 0.6 amps here in voltage of 4.2 volts and it auto, already auto detected the three cells. Lipo, um, you know, the chemistry is a lipo battery, of course. And then we'll just, so this side over here, hit start and it'll start charging. A little bit unbalanced. Yep. And then the uh, internal resistance numbers are popped in here. So uh, I can see now why the cell number one is a little bit lower. You can see the resistance in that cell is quite a bit higher than the other two. So that's, that explains why it's a little bit unbalanced. It's, this is probably a slightly damaged battery. You probably shouldn't use it anymore. I don't really use it for anything other than demo, demonstrations here for chargers. But yeah, this is what's going on here with that one. And then uh, after a certain amount of time, it times out. And if you want it, it shows the other channel. If you have another channel going, it'll show both at the same time, where you just click in here and it'll just show channel one. Uh, currently charging at 0.6 amps. It shows total number of milliamps going in, charge time there, the charge status of the battery, 85%. And then if you press down, it shows you the other statistics here. And so this is pretty much how like all the other ISDT chargers work. Nothing really too surprising there. Anyway, I think it's going to pretty much cover for this charger. Yeah, if you are serious about charging your big batteries, um, I would highly recommend getting the ISDT um, branded power supply that's meant for this particular charger. It'll give you the full, uh, basically, watt out, uh, wattage output that you're going to need for this if you're going to be charging those really big batteries. Yeah, you can go with the DIY solution, but um, I would not recommend that unless you really know what you're doing and uh, don't want to spend the money for the bigger charger because I think you're gonna have to get two of these anyway and at that point you might as well just get the bigger one that's actually meant to work with this charger. 
Okay, so I totally forgot that there's a wireless Bluetooth function in this one. You can, you can actually monitor your charging status with a app on the phone, although I'm not sure how useful that is because your Bluetooth range is limited to like 30 meters or something like that. But in, my, in case uh, you want to do that, uh, you have to turn on the wireless radio first. So you have to go into the system settings. And then down here under wireless, it says waiting for Bluetooth connection. And then on your phone, you have to have this ISD Go app. And then go ahead and scan for that device. It's P30 here. Go ahead and add that. And there we go, P30. Okay, so it's interesting. Uh, it's asking me to do a firmware update. So it looks like you can do the firmware update via the app here, um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually hold off on that and do that next time. But you can see here that it's showing the current battery that's plugged in right now, although the charging cycle has stopped, but you can see the voltages match up. And then let's see here if I can actually char start the charging from the phone. And it doesn't look like that's the case, so looks like you have to do it from the charger. And we'll start it. And it is updated on the app as well. So you can keep a track of the charging from your phone. Let's see if we go into here. It doesn't look like it gives you any more information besides that if you tap on here. I wonder if you could stop the charging from your phone. Let's see here, so if I hit the stop, and yeah, you can stop it from the phone, but it doesn't look like you can start it from the phone. You have to start it from the charger. So basically it's just mainly for monitoring your battery charging and stopping in case you can stop it. You can do it from the phone, but again, Bluetooth range is kind of limited. So you can't, it's not like you can do this like, you know, from like far away and keep track of your battery. So you probably will lose the connection at some point. I'm not sure what the exact range of this, but it's kind of gimmicky, but it's there if you if you want to use it. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Talk to you guys in the next one.